Good morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system, the human body, is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to get yourself off your meds or help a loved one wean themselves off their medications and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we welcome your phone calls here on the Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. I think we'll try something a little different today. We'll try uh, to get your calls here in our second segment. The phone lines have been lighting up the last few days, and I hate leaving people on hold. So call in early. We'll get your calls here in our next segment. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, skin care, as we've been talking about skin health and skin care here now for a couple of weeks, we'll continue doing that. If you have questions about acne or eczema, rosacea, any of Really, anything about health or nutrition, we welcome your calls. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those too. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. As I say, we'll get your calls here a little earlier today. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, or if you want to join my team, love to have you on the Bright Side Ben team. We can do this thing together. We can help spread the word about how important a good nutritional supplement program can be. Of course, if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, please call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. You can order products right from the folks on the phone team, 866-735-2470, or sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team, 866-735-2470. You can also purchase products or sign up right off my blog, pharmacistben.com, my new blog, criticalhealthnews.com, or the Brightside Ben website, brightsideben.com. Okay, we are talking skin health. Really, it's all about sim simplicity. I get, I don't know, probably 100, maybe 150 uh, letters a month, uh, and then phone calls and all kinds of questions. There's so many different ways seemingly that the body breaks down, but it's not that complicated because while there's various, there's certainly various uh, chemical procedures or chemical processes that happen in the body and various structures in the body, there's not a lot of ways that the body itself breaks down. As we've said so many times in this program, it's really all about the cells. And breakdown likewise is all about the cells. This is it, folks. Cells are growing too fast. They're growing too slow. They're making too much of the wrong stuff or not enough of the right stuff. And that's it. That's all of health or the lack thereof. Cells growing too fast. Cells growing too slow. Cells making too much of the wrong stuff or not enough of the right stuff. And that's it. It's that simple. And it all is because we're getting bad stuff in or not enough of the good stuff. We're not getting the nutrients and we're getting the bad stuff in. And when we talk about in and out, when we talk about the stuff getting in, I'm talking about into the blood. The blood is the life. It's all about the blood. Yes, all disease is cell disease. Cells growing too fast, too slow, making uh, too much of the wrong stuff or not enough of the right stuff, but it follows dirty blood, period. And any boneheaded medical professional who doesn't understand that needs to go back to medical school. I don't know why this is so complicated for our doctors and our, our healthcare professionals to understand this. It's all about dirty blood. And when we talk about chronic degenerative disease, when we talk about yucky skin, when we talk about cancer, when we talk about anything that has to do with the breakdown of the body, we're talking about sepsis, S-E-P-S-I-S, -S -S, dirty blood, period. 
and the blood only gets dirty if we're sticking something, uh, injecting something through the skin, or if we're breathing some kind of toxin, or if we're eating the wrong stuff. Why is this so difficult? And you throw in nutritional deficiency, you throw in lack of oxygen, and you have the cause of every single one of the 12,800 different diseases. And, and I don't know why our doctors don't understand this. Why the heck are we medicating? What is the logic to medicating ourselves to health? It just doesn't make sense. And it's so tragic. And it's so unfortunate. And I'm here to tell you, if you are dealing with a chronic degenerative disease of any kind, any kind, figure out what's getting into the blood, get yourself on the Mighty 90 nutrients, practice your deep breathing techniques, and relax, lighten up. It's true about everything that goes wrong in the body, and it's true about the skin as well. There's nothing you can do for a skincare problem by rubbing stuff on the surface, unless with the exception of vitamins and some exercise ingredients, which we'll be talking about. The skin makes its own health-inducing substances like any other part of the body. And yesterday we talked about hyaluronic acid. There's lots of products with hyaluronic acid in them. Neutrogena is advertising products with hyaluronic acid in them. You see commercials, you see uh, uh, websites talking about products with hyaluronic acid in them, and they'll all tell you how wonderful hyaluronic acid is, and it is. But what they're not telling you is you can't rub it on your skin and get any of the benefits, with the exception of a little bit of plumping or a little bit of moisture on the surface. That's it. But you can build your own hyaluronic acid. You can make your own. You can stimulate your own. You can, you can increase your own production of hyaluronic acid. This is really kind of like about honoring the body. Really, it's like saying, we don't need to fix the body. We need to feed the body. We don't need any more fixing. There's no fixing that can be done anyway. The body's too smart. The body's way smarter than we are. We're the dummies here. I talked to a gal yesterday. She's trying to get pregnant. And she's not healthy. She's trying to get pregnant. She, three times she's tried to get pregnant. She's aborted and she's spontaneously aborted. And she had miscarried one. She had a stillbirth. These are tragic things. And she's trying to get pregnant. Well, you know what? If you're trying to get pregnant and you can't do it, you can't conceive or you can't hold on to the baby, it's not a drug issue. This lady's being medicated now with hormones to keep her baby. The reason she can't make a baby or anybody can't make a baby is because the body won't let her because the body is smarter than she is. The body is smarter than I am. The body is smarter than you are. The body is smarter than all of us. And the body is certainly smarter than your doctor. If the body doesn't want to make a baby, the solution is not to force it to with drugs. The solution is to figure out why it doesn't want to make a baby. I remember a gal, a couple coming into my pharmacy many years ago. And they were trying to get pregnant, trying to make a baby, trying to make a baby. I kept trying to tell them about their blood sugar and their digestive system or her blood sugar and digestive system. They didn't want to hear it. So I was filling prescriptions for something called Clomid, C-L-O-M-I-D. Clomid forces your body, compels your body to make a baby. Even still, they were coming in to get their Clomid every couple of, uh, twice a week or once a week to get their Clomid prescription. They were always complaining, oh, we can't make a baby. We're trying, we're trying, we're trying. It didn't sound like. So, so it didn't sound like the worst thing in the world to try to make a baby, but anyway, she was trying to make a baby, trying to make a baby, trying to make a baby. And then I didn't see this couple for a while. I used to see them every week or, or a couple times a week, and then I didn't see them. And then eight months later, nine months later, I saw them. Uh, down, this was in a grocery store, Albertson's grocery store. I saw them walking down the aisle at Albertson's grocery store with a baby carriage, except it wasn't an ordinary baby carriage. It was a baby carriage for six babies. She ended up with six babies from her Clomid. That's what happens when you compel the body to do something. You can't force the body to do what it doesn't want to do. It's not fair, it's not right, and it doesn't work anyway. In any case, yesterday we talked about making your own hyaluronic acid. The best way to make your own hyaluronic acid is the same as the best way to make anything in the body, to stimulate the body, to nourish the body. Not to compel it, but to feed it. Not to fix it, but to feed it. In terms of hyaluronic acid, you can exercise your skin. You can exercise your skin. By that, I mean stimulate your skin. I'm not talking about the skin muscles. I'm talking about the skin cells. Exercising the skin cells, stimulating the skin cells is really kind of an interesting concept. And it's kind of misunderstood. In fact, exercise in general is misunderstood. Hang tight. I'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break, and we'll take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is your number on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. We 
are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Hang tight. If you're on the line, we'll get your calls here in just a few minutes. Uh, try to get all our calls in today, so we'll start early. Uh, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Longevity products you hear us advertised on the program or recommend on the program, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Make sure you ask about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine powdered nutritional supplement. You had a little bit to water and drink. It's a wonderful way to replace your water-soluble potassium and magnesium and sodium and vitamin C in the B complex. The water-soluble nutrients are excreted throughout the are excreted throughout the day. They're excreted at night. If you go to the bathroom a couple times at night, chances are pretty good. You're going to be deficient in these powerful, stimulating electrical nutrients. And I sometimes wonder how how uh, how much of our uh, our seemingly epidemic, seeming epidemic of fatigue, of early morning fatigue or addiction to coffee and caffeine in the morning is related to B vitamin deficiency. If you go to the bathroom a couple times in the middle of the night, if you urinate a couple times in the middle of the night and you don't replace your B complex, almost guarantee you're going to be deficient in these super energizing vitamins. Same with the electrolytes. First thing in the morning, of course, you're going to be tired even after a good night's sleep. Maybe it's not coffee we need. Maybe it's the B vitamins and potassium. Well, you can experiment with this yourself. Sip on a little BTT first thing in the morning and see what you notice. You can find, uh, find the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and all the longevity products up at brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com, and you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 as well. Okay, so we'll get your calls here in just a minute. Uh, I want to talk about exercising. When I say exercising the skin, I'm really talking about exercising skin cells. It's true you can exercise facial muscles and skin muscles, and they are important, and they can be very helpful. And I'm going to talk about that here probably on our next Bright Side episode, ex, uh, facial exercise. But when I'm talking about exercising the skin to get more hyaluronic acid, to get more connective tissue fibers, I'm really talking about exercising skin cells. There's lots of ways to do it. We're talking about moving, increasing the dynamic nature of cells, increasing the movement of cells, the growth of cells, and, and then the subsequent production of things from the cells. Remember, all the ways the body breaks down, cells not making enough stuff or cells making too much stuff. So one of the ways we age, at least our skin ages, is skin cells don't make enough stuff. And there's things you can do to, protect, to, uh, to enhance the production of these things, to enhance the production of moisture factors, to enhance the production of growth hormones, to enhance the production of natural sun protection factors. Yes, our skin cells make their own sun protection factors. How do you like that? Ask your the next dermatologist or skincare professional tells you to slather on the sunscreen. Say, doesn't my skin make something called uriconic acid and uriconic acid is a sun protection factor? Isn't that true, doctor? See if your doctor knows about that. When you put your sunscreen on, you suppress your skin's natural production of these factors. I'm going to talk about uriconic acid and filigrin and some of these other components that are protective and that are moisturizing, that the skin naturally makes on its own, that we should be looking at enhancing instead of slathering on products on the top of the skin, which ironically suppress our skin's natural moisture factors, suppress our skin's ability to protect itself from the sun, etc. Do you know your moisturizing cream is suppressing your skin's production of hyaluronic acid? That's right. Tell that to Cindy Crawford. Write her a letter. Cindy, isn't it true that my moisturizer, or the moisturizer I'm using, is suppressing my own natural hyaluronic acid production? I don't mean to pick on Cindy or anybody else for that matter. The fact of the matter is we can do it ourselves. And when it comes to the skin, by enhancing the production of moisture factors, we won't need moisturizing cream. By enhancing the production of hyaluronic acid and connective tissue fibers, we won't need wrinkle creams. By far and away, the best and most relevant, topically relevant anyway, way to exercise the skin is to apply low pH or acidic material on the skin. The acid, the acid nature of the skin is very important to recognize. Inside the body, you want the body alkaline, high pH. Why? Because alkaline kind of slows things down. Alkaline, or at least slow, at least uh, a slightly alkaline, has a, has a kind of relaxing effect on the body. Oxygen is alkaline. You want alkaline the inside of your body? Get it oxygen. That's the way you want alkaline. By deep breathing, oxygenating. Blowing off carbon dioxide reduces acid because carbon dioxide is acidic. On the skin, however, it's the opposite. Alkaline on the skin is associated with, skin, with poor skin health, and acid on the skin is associated with healthy skin with beautiful glowing skin. And by dropping the pH, making the skin slightly more acidic, you can jack up the production of all the good stuff. 
And there's one wonderful way to draw up the pH of the skin, to increase the production of hyaluronic acid, to stimulate the skin, to smooth the skin, to soften the skin. To get all the wonderful benefits we want from our skincare products, you can do it by dropping the pH of the skin topically. You can put things on the skin that make the skin more acidic. We will talk about that on our next Bright Side episode as we can dis continue discussing hyaluronic acid and all the wonderful things that we can do to upregulate the production of hyaluronic acid as well as connective tissue fibers and moisture factors and all the good stuff in the skin. And we'll talk about that uh, next, uh, next, next Bright Side episode and, and probably through the coming days and maybe even the coming weeks. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to Brenda in Missouri. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side, Brenda. Hi, Ben. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Good morning. What's going on? It's good to talk to you. Um, Same. Um, my daughter, she's have, she has a third pregnancy. Just started uh, 12 weeks ago. Okay, congratulations. Um, thank you. She has, on her first two, she was sick the entire time. Okay. And um, I was wondering if you had any kind Lots of... Lots of strategies. Yes, lots of strategies. If, first of all... I am, I am at work, and I'm sorry, so I need to hang up. But you I'll can hang up and then the listen to the arc. Yeah, listen to the archives. One, one thing I want to mention, she has Rh negative, so she always has to have that. Okay, um, is she diabetic or anything? No, she is Did not. she have any blood sugar problems with her? Did she have any blood Not sugar problems her. with her first? Yes uh, or no? No. 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 Okay. No. Okay, good. All right. Well, I, I'm not going to be able to give you the best answer if you're not with us, but that, that's fine if you have to be at work. Where are you working, by the way? It. Where um, do you work? At, at Don't say hospital. where, but what do you do? <laughs> at a hospital. Okay. I'm oh, really? I'm the mailman. I'm the mailman at a hospital. <laughs> you're the male, male person at the hospital? Male person. That's oh, me, okay. yes. All right, anyway. good deal. Well, thanks for calling, Brenda. Thank Appreciate you, it. Ben. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, All right, so here, here's the deal with pregnancy. As I said, I talked to a gal yesterday who's trying to have a baby and uh, can't or can't hold on to a baby. Having a baby is a very stressful thing on the body, as any woman will tell you. It may be the most stressful thing that we ever have to go through in a non-traumatic or non-accidental kind of fashion. Having a baby is... You're, first of all, something is entering into the body that is foreign to the body, so you're initiating all kinds of immune problems. Then you've got to feed the baby uh, in, inside as the baby's growing, so you're losing resources. The B vitamins are going to the baby, and nature doesn't care about the mother as much as it cares about the baby. <laughs> all the resources, when, you, when a, a pregnant mom eats her protein and her fats and her vitamins, etc., they're all going to the baby, and that's assuming she's getting those nutrients. So it's extremely easy to become nutritionally deficient when you're pregnant. And if you're subsisting on the standard American diet, almost guaranteed you're going to become nutritionally deficient. So you've got changes in the immune system. You've got changes in how the body's handling nutrients and how the, uh, how the body is uh, 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 allocating nutrients. And you've got uh, blood sugar changes as well. So you've got between problems with blood sugar, problems with the immune system, problems with nutritional deficiencies, you've got a major burden on the body, which means you have to be kind and gentle to the body. You always have to be kind and gentle to the body, but when it's, on, when it's under the duress of a pregnancy, it becomes extra, extra, extra important to do it. And there's lots of strategies, lots and lots. If you have a food problem for one thing, you absolutely got to get that under control. Hang tight. And uh, we'll discuss uh, Brenda's, Brenda's grandbaby to be when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Our number 844-236-6010. Got some lines open for you. We'll get to uh, see if we get all the calls here today. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear us talk about on the program, call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the phone team if you prefer to talk to somebody. Or you can go to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Okay, so we're talking to, uh, we were talking to Brenda, she's gone now, about her pregnant, uh, pregnant daughter. Pregnancy is a burden on the body, it's a stress on the body, 
nature cares about the baby, not the mother. The resources, uh, whatever resources are there are going to the baby first and then mother second, which means mother can run into nutritional deficiencies very quickly. Nutritional deficiencies can show up as all kinds of health problems, including nausea, including uh, morning sickness. Morning sickness is oftentimes caused by nutritional deficiencies, plus the fact that there's some kind of enemy in the body. Morning sickness, the sense of vomiting or wanting to throw up is one of the ways the body protects itself. And the body is, the immune system is protecting itself from the baby. The baby is a foreign invader in a way in the body. So uh, for mom, if you're having morning sickness, first and foremost, you got to make sure you're using your nutrients, especially your electrical nutrients, especially vitamin B6. You know, vitamin B6 is actually a prescription drug for treating morning sickness. Now, I'm not saying it's only vitamin B6, but certainly you want vitamin B6 as well as all the B vitamins. That means the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, sipping on the BTT, getting on the whole healthy start pack. The baby's brain is very dependent on essential fatty acids. You build a smarter baby. You build a baby with better hand-eye coordination. You build a baby with better vision. If you have enough essential fatty acids, especially omega-3 fatty acids, so please make sure that your, uh, Brenda, that your daughter is using the ultimate essential fatty acids, 3, 6, uh, 9, 12, 15 a day. You got to make sure you're getting your minerals, especially zinc. Zinc is so important for building the baby's brain. Same with iodine for that matter. All the minerals really, but zinc and iodine stand out. 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day. Make sure, you're, uh, make sure she's balancing that out with copper. Copper is very important for the circulatory system. And then uh, iodine also is important. You can use nascent iodine. Dr. Group's got a great nascent iodine product. You can also, uh, uh, you can also use uh, Lugol solution or, or iodorol. I like iodorol. Iodorol is inexpensive and it's, uh, you can get generic iodorol. Make sure you're eating seaweed. Ocean's Gold, if you're using longevity products, will get you some iodine. Make sure you're eating seafood. Of course, you've got to be careful these days with the mercury. Selenium, by the way, is a great way to protect yourself from mercury, so get on the ultimate selenium, too. You might also want to try some NAC if you want to protect yourself from, from mercury poisoning. NAC protects you from mercury. Minerals, good minerals will protect you from mercury, so make sure you're on a good nutritional supplement program in general. And then if you want to pick a couple more things, please keep your sugar intake down. Sugar is the enemy for you, and sugar is the enemy for your baby. And by sugar, I'm talking refined carbohydrates, flour, cereals, breads, etc. Fruit juices, desserts, that goes without saying. Make sure you're using your Sweeties product. And more protein is a great way to wean yourself off from sugar. And it's also a great way to help you build a baby, especially whey protein. Slender FX has whey protein, whey protein in it. Whey protein throughout the day. Bone soup is a great way to get building connective tissue fibers. I got a really cool letter from a gal. Love my smart, bright side listeners. Barbara wrote me yesterday. Please comment on glycine. There's a new, she sent me a link about a new theory of aging. We should eat more glycine. Glycine is a stupendously important amino acid. Very underrated. Very underappreciated. Glycine deficiency is more common than not, even though it's said to be a non-essential amino acid. It's the smallest of the amino acids. Glycine is found in bone soup and cartilage-containing products. Glycine helps build connective tissue, builds fibers. You'll find it in whey protein. So make sure you're getting enough glycine-containing proteins. Egg, seafood, bone soup, all contain glycine. All these are great ways to build a baby, and that's exactly what you're doing when you're pregnant. You're building a baby. So by keeping your stress level down, your I'm talking physiologic stress, as well as mental stress and emotional stress. Moms, listen, if you're building a baby, you don't have a right to freak out. I know life can cause freakouts. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong in life, and it's easy to freak out. But when you're building a baby, it's almost like you don't have a right to freak out, and you don't have a right to smoke cigarettes either. I'm sorry to be on my high horse about moms who smoke, but if you're building a baby, it's just not fair to smoke cigarettes, because guess who else is smoking? Yes, your baby. And when you're freaked out, and you're building a baby, guess who else is freaked out? Your baby. Deep breathing, oxygenation, is incredibly important for the baby's health. Oxygen is how the baby grows, just like how your cells grow and divide and function. So make sure you're practicing your deep breathing techniques. And if you're smoking cigarettes, your baby is smoking cigarettes too. If you're a cigarette smoker, and I'm, I'm an ex-smoker, so I know how hard it is to quit. But if you're a smoker, <laughs> your baby, just picture your baby with a cigarette in your baby's mouth and your beautiful growing fetus's mouth. Just picture him with a little cigarette dangling out of his mouth. And if that doesn't get you to quit smoking or at least reduce your intake of cigarettes, Reduce your intake of cigarettes. Uh, I don't know what else. I don't know what else would. All right. 
Congratulations, Brenda. Hope we helped you out. Thanks for your call. Tom in Texas, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Thanks, Ben, for taking my call. Sure. Uh, actually, I was going to ask your opinion uh, regarding e-cigarettes in comparison to traditional cigarettes. Oh, well, they're way, way better, but you're still getting stuff when you smoke e-cigs. Uh, they have flavoring agents, menthol, which is definitely not good to be inhaling, propylene glycol, probably don't want to be inhaling that. There's all kinds of stuff that's in e-cigs. Uh, it's better, you know, it's better certainly than, uh, than smoking cigarettes, but that's just because cigarettes are so darn toxic, but it's not like they're great. If you have an op, if you... Yeah, if you that's, have, what I, I, that's what I was thinking. I never thought that e-cigarettes were uh, healthy or safe. It was just... I've, Better. I've seen a lot around when we're saying they're 10,000 times worse than cigarettes. And no, like, no, no, no. Not that I know, know of. Because I, unless... I, I was smoking cigarettes from 12 to 30. Oh, and man. just about a year ago, I, I switched over to e-cigarettes, and I don't get short-winded when I go check the mail. You know, and overall, I've been feeling better, but I've just been wondering, is there, like, a worse thing? Well, I don't think so, I although you never, you never know. I mean, you may find out later because you are heating stuff and then breathing it. That's not good. And, by the way, there's some nicotine, too, in e-cigs. It's just not as much. So it's not a good idea to breathe and inhale anything. I get people asking me about marijuana a lot, and people have this idea that marijuana smoke is somehow, is somehow not a problem. Anytime you're breathing in smoke, that's not a good thing. All right, I, it, anywhere. So e-cigs are better than cigarettes, and but that's just more of an indictment on cigarettes than than a, a compliment to e-cigs. So what you want to do is use your e-cigs to wean yourself off of off cigarettes, and then wean yourself off of the e-cigs. That's what I would be doing personally if it was me. They're not great, but they're yeah. certainly better. They're certainly better than cigarettes. Yeah. Does that help? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's Here's another tip question. for you. Here's another tip for you. Gargle with vitamin C. After you do your e and then swallow vitamin C too. After you do your e-cigarette, after you do your cigarettes, every time you smoke a cigarette, you lose vitamin C as your body attempts to purify itself. So by using vitamin C and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine after you smoke, whether it's an e-cig or a cigarette or a bong hit or whatever you're doing, you can help minimize some of the damage from uh, the smoke by using vitamin C. Also, vitamin E is protective against against damage, lung damage from smoke, and also. Uh, NAC, N-acetylcysteine, one of my all-time favorite supplements, and selenium may also be helpful too. Your ultimate selenium, just a good nutritional supplement program in general, is a great way to mitigate some of the damage associated with cigarette smoke or e-cig smoke or pot smoke or whatever smoke you're doing. Does that help you? Oh, there's our, there's our music. Tom, was that good? <laughs> All right, th thank you, buddy. Be good. Have a beautiful day. All right, we're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Florida and say hi to Chris. What's up, my friend? How you doing, buddy? Hello. How are you? Hello, Chris. Greetings. What's hey, cooking? Ben, uh, pleasure to talk to you. Uh, it's an honor to talk to you. You are the man. Oh, thank uh, you. I have a lot of nurses and doctors in my family, and I wish I could hire you to come over and just smack them in the face with oh, your knowledge awesome. and, and, and get them back to reality. But, thank uh, you. What? You you are the best. I don't want to waste anybody's time. Uh, just uh, with the no. Accolades. Keep telling me uh, how good I am. I, I I'll give okay. as much time yeah. as you. No, well, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I have uh, I have three kids. Uh, they're nine, ten, and eleven, and of course they're they're my world. Uh, and, and trying to convince them or to teach them uh, about the ways of the the new foods that we eat and you know GMOs. So we try to be as non-GMO as possible. But uh, they're all athletic and. Uh, they all, uh, I hate to say, but they all suffer from a, a slight shortness of breath sometimes, and they have to okay. take, like, deep breaths. And I, I'm not a freak, but I know that they're dumping something in the sky, and, and I, we drink off well water, so we're okay. But Where in Florida a, are you, Chris? Where do you live? Uh, right in Orlando, and okay. hoping you would come there one day. I've been there a lot, and I would never ah. go there this time of year, that's for sure. <laughs> Again, <laughs> <don't blame> <laughs> Oh my God, that that's a hot place, man. Uh, are you right near Disney World? Uh, basically, I'm in St. Cloud, which is just uh, yeah, Kissimmee, St. Cloud. Yeah, just about about a half hour from Disney. 
Okay, well, the humidity, you know, humidity probably doesn't help the breathing. It's, the air is so saturated with, with moisture out there. A couple of things, yeah. and you're right, they do dump all kinds of stuff out there, and they put stuff in the water. And, you know, even if your kids are eating well, if they're, if they're eating anything that's got water in it, or if they're drinking anything that has water in it, they're going to be getting all the crap that's in the water. So you're absolutely correct about that. A couple of things you might want to consider doing is uh, practicing slow, deep breathing techniques so they work on the musculature, the lung muscles. Usually kids don't have a problem that way, but if you're noticing some shortness of breath, that could be an issue. Is there any weight issues, did you say, or no? No, absolutely not. They're as healthy as you can be. They've all got six-packs. Uh, oh, that's we're awesome. We're not maniacs, but they, they're super athletic uh, track well, I don't think you have any problems, man. What makes you think no. you've got a problem? You're noticing shortness of breath, you're saying? Yeah, like they'll just be sitting on the couch. Not that we sit on the couch a lot, but if they're sitting on the couch, they'll just, like my older son especially, and he's probably most athletic, but they'll just have to take a super deep breath as if he can't catch his breath. Yeah, you got to uh, get I, him. I'm not a believer in the asthma thing. That's, a, that's BS. You know, like it's related to something other than just I'm born with asthma. It doesn't make any sense. No, you know there's I mean? no born so, with asthma. Is it, how's, his, how's the skin? Breakouts or anything like that? Eczema, uh, rashes? No, he... On record, he has been uh, the most allergic child that this team of allergists one a couple years ago uh, had determined from his uh, from an ant bite. But they scratched him with some sort of scratch test when yeah. he was about two or three, and he was extremely allergic. My wife and I are fine, but he was extremely allergic to uh, fire ants and all this other stuff. Uh, but that just sort of faded with age. Okay, uh, and he, he did have a lot of skin rashes as an infant, probably spider bites that we didn't know or misdiagnosed. No, but, uh, well, don't rashes would. Rash would be different from a bite. A rash would be more diffuse, and a bite would be more localized. So a rash is distinct from a bite. Here's the thing, Chris, and you sound like a smart guy, so the kids have you. Uh, you're a resource for those kids. Here's what you're going to need to do. Look for other symptoms. If, it's, if there's zero, if you're absolutely sh and bowel movements and skin are the two most important to look for, or, or ga digestive symptoms, I should say, and, uh, and um, skin issues. Those are the two most important ones to notice. If your kids are tall and athletic and you can't find any other symptoms, I wouldn't worry about it, although I probably would be doing some yoga or deep breathing techniques. However, if you notice skin reactions, that's an important clue. And if you notice any digestive issues, bloating, gas, uh, uh, heartburn, sense of fullness, diarrhea, constipation, loose stools, anything like that, then those are red flags for you. And that's what you really want to focus on. The breath itself, the shortness of breath, that's not enough information. I always tell people there's a, it's kind of like the guy Bob, do you ever hear Bob Ross, the painter? Yeah, you know oh, I've got a t-shirt with him. I love him. He's the oh, best. that's great. That's great. How old are you, Chris? You sound like uh, a young guy. 40. Oh, okay, okay, good. So, yeah, Bob Ross for the listeners is this painter, and he shows you how easy it is to paint. He's, he's on NPR or, or public television, and uh, he shows you how easy it is to paint. And he'll get this canvas, and he'll put a, a little line in the middle of the painting, and you'll go, what the heck is that? It's just a line. And then I'll put another line, and then I'll put three lines and a dot, and all of a sudden you see a river. And then I'll put another line, and you'll see a mountain. You know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, he's right? That's what you got to do. You got one dot in the middle of your canvas with the breathing. We got to find some other dots and we got to find some other lines. And then you can start to get a picture. With one dot with the breathing, that's not enough of a picture. Look for other symptoms. But it sounds like you're on the right track, Chris. If you well, uh, honestly, Ben, it's listening to you that has helped me. I mean, thank I love you. Dr. McCuller and Dr. Wallach and Dr. Glidden and everybody else. Uh, but you are the man. I mean, I wish I could download what you have in your brain, and I, I should feel as though I should be paying you. Well, it takes one to know one, Chris. You probably have a lot more what? information. You probably have a lot more knowledge than you're giving yourself credit for. But in any no. case, what you want to do is you want to look for other symptoms. That's, the, that, that's really what you, what you need to do. Why don't you okay. do this, my friend? See okay. if you can gather up some symptoms, especially digestive and especially uh, skin, and then give me a call back and let me know. You can either shoot me an email and put your phone number in there, and I'll call you back or call us on the radio. I'd love to hear what you have to say and love it if you would share with our listeners. And thanks for the kind Absolutely. words. I really appreciate it. Take care, hey, brother. Ben, come on. This is a world gone mad, and you are the only light in the fog that I could see that anybody makes sense. And, of course, what you say doesn't really make biz big business money, and it pains me so that my children have to go grow up in a world like this. I've actually told them, if anything happens to me in, in my 40, you know, if I die tomorrow, please seek out the advice of Pharmacist Ben. If you got to go walk to Boulder, Colorado, oh, Orlando, man. find them. I might need a press. I might need to hear you wrong. I might need an agent, Chris. I'm going to keep you in mind. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Take it. care. Thank All you right, so much, Take ben. care. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. All right. That was a cool phone call. All right. Let's see. Uh, Let's go to uh, Julie in Alabama. What is up, Julie? Welcome to the Bright Side. 
Hey, um, I'm 55 and I don't sleep well, and I know a okay. lot of women my age don't sleep yep. well. Could you speak to that? Yes, I will speak to that. How? Uh, where are you in your cycle? Are you perimenopausal, postmenopausal, menopausal? As far as I can tell, I'm postmenopausal. Postmenopausal. Well, as far as you can tell, are you still having periods? Oh no. Okay, then you're you're in it. You're menopausal. That's that's the definition. Pause of mena. Mena meaning periods yeah. and pause meaning paused. So, all right, here's the deal. Your body is not going to let you sleep when it's freaked out because to the body, a freak out represents a lion. And the body loves you. The body loves you. This is how much God loves us. He gave us a body that is our guardian throughout our life on planet Earth. And so when the body thinks that its life is at stake or your life is at stake, it isn't going to let you fall asleep. So the question is, when you have insomnia, and insomnia is almost like an epidemic, if it's not an epidemic, it may be an epidemic. Uh, if, right. if you have a problem sleeping, if you have insomnia, that is a sign that the body thinks its survival is at stake. You've got to figure out why. The most likely suspect is going to be food. As the wrong food gets into the blood, and as the blood becomes dirty, we talked about this earlier in the show, uh, that's a condition called sepsis. That's a sign of major, major, major stress to the body. Uh, the body interprets that dirty blood as a sign of uh, its survival is at stake. So you got to figure out why the body feels like its survival is at stake. Almost always it's going to be dirty blood. And when I say dirty blood, I'm including sugar in that equation. Now, if you have mental or emotional or psychological stress or survival threats, those are all, all part of the picture. I'm just not going to address those. But just recognize that you got to deal with psychological issues, mental issues, emotional issues if they're there because those represent survival threats to the body. But from a physical perspective, number one, digest. Digestive distress, digestive problems, that's one of the major ways toxins get into the blood to initiate this kind of response. That means do a food diary, eliminate problem foods, look for digestive symptoms, link them to foods, and then strengthen the digestive system with probiotics, good bacteria that is, uh, the bioluminightly essence, make sure you're getting your basic nutrients, the, uh, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, that is the healthy start pack. You're also going to need to stabilize blood sugar because blood sugar toxicity, or, or blood toxicity, if you will, sugar toxicity from blood toxicity from sugar, that will cause distress. More protein, less refined carbohydrates, fruit juice, desserts, etc. So you can see these are all the same things that everybody has to do. Chromium vanadium, that is the sweeties, can be helpful for you. You might want to do a couple of sweeties or maybe a sip on some Beyond Tangy Tangerine before you go to bed. Also, there are nutrients that can help relax you uh, if you can't sleep. And if you're deficient in these nutrients, you're going to have a problem sleeping. And key of uh, mo the most important of these sleep nutrients, if you will, is magnesium. Magnesium deficiency is very, very common. It may be the most common of all the mineral deficiencies. Uh, and magnesium is found in green leafy vegetables, which is one of the reasons why we're deficient in it, because we don't like our green leafy vegetables. Do some Beyond Osteo effects before you go to bed. That'll get you some magnesium. You can also do something called GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, before you go to bed. And also lithium orotate before you go to bed or at bedtime. Uh, that can also help relax you. We talked a touch about glycine earlier. Glycine also has a relaxing effect. So does 5-HTP or the amino acid tryptophan, all those taken before bed. A tiny little bit of protein taken before bed can stabilize your blood sugar so you don't go into hypoglycemia in the middle of the night. If your blood sugar drops in the middle of the night, you'll get a spark of emergency hormones and you won't be go, able to go back to sleep. So a little bit of protein before you go to bed, especially whey protein can be helpful. Uh, there's a couple more things, but we're just out of time, Julie. I hope we helped you out. Slow, deep breathing is always good to calm the body down, too. All right, if we left you on hold, I apologize. Call back on Monday. We'll get you first up. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a spectacular, awesome, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.